In this video, I'll show you how I made this Headless Horseman tombstone prop. Here are the materials that I used. Tissue paper, spray glue, glue, duct tape, paint, paint brushes, cardboard, styrofoam sheets, and poster board, spray paint, textured spray paint, a pirate or colonial coat, tin foil, wax paper, a pumpkin decoration, a plastic sword, and gloves. This prop costs around $50. It really depends on how much you spend on your pirate coat. If you get a really cheap one, obviously it'll be cheaper. And it took around eight hours to make. This prop comes in two parts, the bust and the base. Let's first see how I made the bust. I used this cardboard box as my main structure and I made sure that my pirate coat fit on it. <laughs> Using scissors and duct tape and an additional box, I created a basic shape. Then I cut a hole at the top and placed a plastic cup there. This is going to be for the light that I'm going to add later. And I used some butcher paper that you can get at a craft store or a teacher store and crumpled it up. The butcher paper is used to create that bust shape and I secure it in place with tape. Once I'm happy with the shape, I then use tin foil to cover it. This will be helpful later when I add the paint. Then at the top, I cover the hole with tin foil. This is to allow the light to sparkle and reflect. I continue to use the tin foil to sculpt shoulders and a neck. The shoulders are made from plastic bowls. I use poster board and tape to sculpt the arms. Then I take an old pair of garden gloves, stuff them with tissue paper, and attach them to the arms. I sculpt a shirt out of the tin foil, then I add this old costume belt, and finally I put it all together. Then we create a mixture of three parts glue to one part water, add a little bit of this exterior paint, add a little bit of black paint. So we apply that mixture, then we add some tissue paper and give it one more application of that mixture on top. After the entire bust is covered, we move on to working on our pumpkin. I attached a covered tube so that I can run my lights through it. This tube also helps to secure it to the bust. Now we give it a day to dry. I painted the pumpkin with primer and attached it to the sculpture using that spray glue. Then I take a mixture of black paint, light gray, and a metallic spray paint, kind of mix it all together to give it that stone look. And now it's time to start work on the base. I used an old box to create the base. Then I went online and found this horse silhouette. I traced it on the box and cut it out using a sharp knife. Now originally my horse was gonna be larger, but then I thought, having a giant hole in the front would not allow the bus to be secure. Then using the same method as mentioned earlier, 
I applied the mixture of glue and paint and then added tissue paper and painted over it again. This not only has this cool effect that makes it look like stone, but it also makes the box very sturdy. I used the tinfoil once again to add details. Tinfoil is so easy to work with and so easy to sculpt with. Then adding another layer of the tissue paper on top of that really makes it look like stone. On the inside, I attached some wax paper and painted it lightly with some black paint. It's barely noticeable when the lights are on, but later I'll show you how sticking a light on the inside will really make this horse glow. It wasn't looking like a tombstone to me just yet, so I added these dollar store skulls to the side. Later I plan to put some candles on top of them. I had an idea to add a little bit more detail to the side. So I cut out these pumpkin shaped holes and added some wax paper to the inside. On one side of the wax paper, I drew a pumpkin face and I attached that by adding glue around the outside and then taping it securely to the back. Again, this will allow it to glow. I spray paint the whole base with black, then later I'll add some gray and some metallic. I then dry brush some white and light gray. This really makes those wrinkles pop and gives it that stone look. I used two sheets of styrofoam for my base and cut out a hole for my light. I then apply tissue paper and glue. And in the middle, I use tin foil. This will help to reflect the light. Now that everything is painted, the last step is to use this clear gloss spray to really seal the paint together so it doesn't chip. This also helps to weatherize. Now it's not gonna be waterproof, but it will be pretty water resistant. But I would not advise leaving this out in the open. Now let's take this prop indoors to see all the special effects in the lighting. Here's what this prop looks like in three different types of lighting. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that maybe you picked up a couple of ideas. If you have any ideas to share or if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below.